used to be because Canada and the U.S. were actually, um, we actually, America has always been stronger, but in the Olympiads, Canada often gave the U.S. a, uh, a good fight, but not anymore because, you know, now they're stacked. They have all these imports, um, yeah. <laughs> um, not really born. It, it, it's not USA. Team yeah, anymore. you know, just like the <laughs> any sports team. <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah, well, um, I'm, in, I'm in the study here. Um, you but, added okay. a lot of new chapters. Uh, <laughs> is the first one 20, no, uh, 26? 26. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, as, uh, there are a lot, but they are, uh, they are end games. Uh, some of them are not that complex, as you see in the first one. But, uh, well, we talked about uh, taking a look at some end games and... Yeah. I thought, well, let's let's start from the beginning, okay. just to clarify some concepts. Yeah, and you, and you uh, might not know where I'm at endgame wise. Yeah, then that's especially why I want to start. Uh, this is my test. This is beginning. my test. <laughs> yeah, uh, this is like I don't know if you heard about uh, the Jesus de la Villa uh, endgame yeah. book. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, th uh, this is kind of that. Oh, <laughs> uh, right, right. I have to. I, I have to give, give credit. All of these examples oh, are it, taken from the Endgame manual from Deboretsky. So it might be. Oh, uh, 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 <laughs> I, I, I read some of that, man. I've got it. I've got the, uh, the, the Endgame man. Yeah. Um, but I only made it. I, I've only read like maybe uh, like 5% of it. It's pretty daunting. Um, yeah. So it's, it has studies. It's. Yeah, and it's, I th it's, it's also a little hard to read because, uh, you know, translated from Russian, it's a little, it's not a casual reading. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, the Dvoretsky uh, is very, he goes to the point. He, uh, his literary style is... Uh, yeah, very dry. Very yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. Um, I, I don't have the physical book copy, but I bought it on Chessable, um, which you might have oh, heard of. Chessable. Yeah, so I bought it there. Um, which is kind of handy because, you know, I can practice the positions, but I haven't, I haven't looked at that in like maybe a year. Um, and then I, I also, um, I, I'm looking cause I've got it over there. I've got the Jeremy Soman's, uh, complete end game course, the book. And I've read about like 80, yeah. 80 or 90% of that, which I really loved. I uh, found so that very, very useful. Um, well, you have a very good base on, on the end game, and then because if you read almost all of the Jeremy, yeah, Jeremy but that book, one, that one is it's kind of it's not that complex, so that one, right? Um, it's not like the yeah, Debrecki is a different beast. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, well, uh, so if you read some of the Debrecki, you might have uh, studied what key squares are. Um, Mm -hmm. This is a kind of basic uh, end game, the most basic you can get with only a pound. Which, which are the three here? Yeah, well, I think it's basically the the um, the if 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 white can control uh, basically the the three ranks to uh, the queen in the pawn, um, then so if the king can get to basically. Uh, a7 or c7 then this pawn would be escorted all the way back um, so i think yeah, once that's... you get far far enough opposition doesn't actually matter um, if you control the key squares is that right yeah but uh the thing is which are the key squares the key squares of the pawn on b4 and this is important to remember are the three ones that are in front of him uh, separated for, uh, from the pound by one rank. So the key squares for the pound on B4 are C6, B6, and A6. This means that if your king gets to any one of those three squares, you win irrespective of who is uh, to play in that position. For example, you get your king to A6. Let's say you get your king to A6. And your opponent uh, has a king on b8, and it's his turn and his place. King a8, he wins the opposition, uh, but it doesn't matter at all because you have an extra move with your pawn. You play b5, and then it's his turn again, and he's going to have to give the opposition back. He plays mm. king b8, king b6, and now you get to the squares. You say 
A7 or C7. Um, this is a rule for all endgames. Uh, the key squares of the pawn on B4, in this case, are these three ones. If the pawn was on E3, the three square, critical squares would be uh, D5, E5, and F5. And that's important what? to remember. Uh, because sorry. Uh, uh... Uh, for a pound on E3, for example. Oh, E3. Sorry, I thought you said D3. Okay, yeah. So yeah. I, I guess yes. that's why, I because I heard if if um, if the king is two squares ahead of the pawn, then it's an automatic win. I guess it's for this very reason, because you will control those key squares. Yeah. Um, if you get to one of those three, uh, it doesn't matter if your opponent gets the opposition at any, at any point, because you have that extra move with the pound and you get back the opposition uh, so uh, there's no way uh, black has uh, any drawing chances if you get your king to one of those three squares okay and um, well that this this is the kind of rule that um, lets you, you know, just avoid uh, any further calculation yeah it's a shortcut yeah. uh yeah um, and i i think that would be useful yeah for if you're looking maybe like eight moves ahead in the end game and then you're starting to get confused, but you're like, oh, but then I can get the king here. I'll be, I'll be, I'll be fine. Right. Um, yeah, exactly. Okay. And it helps yeah. you to explain some other end games. Uh, now it's white to play. How do you win this? Oh God. I hate these things because they're so <laughs> deceptive. Sometimes they can be so hard, like king and pawn end games, like, yeah, and king and pawn and rook and pawn, there's like no pieces on the board, but they can be so complex. It's so weird, right? It's so weird. Like you know, like sometimes, yeah, even... like sometimes the, the correct move is to like is to like go to the corner, or there's like and and shouldering is something that sometimes confuses me. Um, okay, but anyway, so uh, white to move. So you, we're trying to get to one of these key squares. You say, um, I'm. So my main concern is if I if I try to go to C6 that I could get shouldered out. I think he's going to be able to restrict me from going that way. I'm almost wondering if um, the quickest way would be to actually go to A6. Um, so on the, I don't know, because that's going to take me five moves. So it's it's white to move, right? So five yeah, moves. it's white to move. So that'd be five moves and then one, two, three. No, he'd be able to stop me before that. Um, and I mean, if opposition doesn't matter here, if it did, then I might try to get uh, distant opposition, but I mean, <laughs> I'm afraid to give an answer because these are so deceptively <laughs> difficult. <laughs> Yeah, even with so little material. I know, it's, it's so complex. weird. Uh, chess I, is difficult. It, even here. I know, it's like, it's kind of embarrassing because it, it makes you feel like you're just learning the rules. You know? <laughs> like, um, okay, well, I don't know. I mean... What happens if you take a straight line? If you go, for example, king d2, king e7, 3, king d6, Sorry, sorry, can, uh, uh, can, can you say, yeah. uh, say that again? Oh, I'm sorry, it, it's cutting. Uh, if you go in a straight line, you, for example, you play king d2, king e7, king c3, king d6, king c4, king c6. Now he gets your position and you get that uh, absolutely drawn end game. There's no way you're going to get to the critical squares. So you have to go for the critical squares that are farther away from the black king. Um, oh, sorry, but I, said, in, in that line you just said, um, oh, he would be on. He would be king c6, and I and I would yeah. be king c4. Uh, okay. You have three moves until you get to c4, and he also has three moves to get to c6. So uh, he's getting there in time. Uh, yeah. So you have to take another route. Um, the geometry of the of the board actually uh, lets you take another road. To... Well, I know I know that there is the weird. Um, I know that the geometry of the chessboard is there's like this, for example, if we wanted to go uh, here, we can actually take like a roundabout route. It's the same number of squares. Like um, you can, 
I know that uh, like this is uh, one, two, three, four, five squares, but I know that you can also um, take the same distance by going like diagonally, uh, one, two, three, four, five. Um, I know that you yeah. can go around. I know that, um, but yeah, so three, I mean, three squares, we would be on C4. The thing is, your opponent actually gets to one of the critical squares, and you can do nothing about it if you go uh, in a straight line. Yeah, I'm uh, you have to aim for a difference. Uh, yeah, basics. you have to go for the farther uh, uh, critical square so that the king doesn't get there. Uh, um, uh, um. You mean, but we have to get to a6 before? Uh, well, at least you have to try. <laughs> uh, because if you go uh, in a straight line, he's just uh, uh, gets the opposition <laughs> and you can't progress. I hate these kids are so... So you have to start... <laughs> so you have hard. to start walking towards a6. Yeah, okay. You don't get to a seat, or, or, or I mean, um, <clears throat> sorry. Uh, he can prevent it, but uh, he has to give way, and then you can gain the opposition and outflank him. Um, yeah, I'm just calculating here. Like, so I, I, I'm looking at um, King C2. King e7, King b3, um, say King uh, King d7, King a4, yeah, King um, um, King c6. King. Yeah, you have two options. You can go to C7 or C6. They are yeah. equivalent, actually. Uh, if he goes to C6, what happens there? Uh, well, King A5, um, and then, and then, yeah, and then, then we're gonna go to King A6. So we will have the key square. Um, and yeah. if he if he instead goes to King C7. Uh, if we go King a five, then, uh, we're going to get the opposition. If we go to King yeah. B five, we won't control the key square, but we'll get the opposition. Yeah, exactly. And uh, then, we'll, then, we'll, then, we'll, then, the yeah, then he'll have to go and then we'll get a key square. Variation is, yeah. Um, five. he can get to see seats. That's uh, so tricky, man. He... <laughs> yeah, even this is difficult. For example, if he goes in C7, I think this this is the most uh, challenging, the trickiest one. Okay, because good. Because if you <laughs> commit the mistake, if you commit the mistake of putting your king on B5, then this is a draw. Yeah, you got yeah. the opposition. Yeah. And um, every time you move the pawn forward, the critical squares also move forward. So <laughs> you're not getting mm -hmm. anywhere there. But with diagonal opposition here. Yeah. You actually, mm -hmm. Well, this is the only move because of a seats. <laughs> and now King B5, and you get the opposition, yeah. and you get to one of these critical squares. Uh, it seems almost like uh, any root wins, but the other ones actually don't let you get to the critical squares, and this is the important thing here, to get there. Um, three key squares of the pawn, and it's applicable in a lot of end games. It looks like a basic concept, but it's actually useful. <laughs> No, um, it's very useful. Yeah. No, and I like. Well, if we just go back for one second, um, like I, 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 I like that. Like this type of thing is very helpful when you kind of said you have to. If you if you if you can control any of these squares. So if the pawn is let's say on h two, if you control any of the, if you get your king to any of these squares, you it's a it's a forced win, right? That's what you're saying. If the pawn is here, if you get your king to any of these squares, it's a it's a forced win, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so that, that uh, yeah, that is helpful because it's kind of a shortcut if you have 
other pieces on the board and you're calculating, you're trying to calculate into the future. If you know that you can end your calculation there, like if you have a pawn here, uh, if you know that you can end up getting your king here, you can stop your calculation. You don't have to keep going, right? Yeah, you say I got the king there. Yeah, it's a win automatically. Yeah. Yeah. So that's yeah, <laughs> that's no very further helpful. <laughs> yeah, uh, and it helps you. In, well, um, it helps you to calculate in many situations. Uh, for example, you look at this position. You want to play. What do you think happens here? Well, first of all, this looks. It almost looks like a uh, a trebuchet, if you have, if you've heard of that term. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, that's from I got that from the Jeremy Silman book, but I don't know if this is exactly a trebuchet, but you basically you guys you kind of like chase around and then one the one king is not going to be able to like hang on and he's going to be whipped out. Um, so let me think here. Uh, so white to move. Yeah, white is not going to get to that formation because he needs his king on c6, so he's very far from, from mm -hmm. getting there. Uh, yeah, I, I'm just wondering if we can go for win or draw. We might just have to force the draw here, but let me think. Um, I, I, I guess I'll say out loud so you can kind of see, uh, see what I'm thinking. Um, so I'm just looking at king c4 first. So king c4, and then uh, immediately we're going to lose the pawn after uh, he moves his king to uh, to e4 or e5. So we can't go there. And if we go straight up to, to d4, um, I think uh, if, he, if he goes to f4 and we go to c4, we're going to get kicked out again. So... Um, now I'm I'm doing it like the Russian school of chess. I'm going through every every force count, every possibility. Um, so King C three. If he goes to E four, um, sorry. So King C three. If he goes to E four, and we go to C four. Uh, but then he just goes up and hangs on to it. Yeah, I, um, and then, yeah, I, so I think we do have to, this is, we're going to be fighting for the draw here. Uh, his king is is too, too advancedly placed. So um, I'm going, I guess my strategy now is to basically get uh, opposition. Uh, so first of all, I guess I've already looked at, yeah, so I so now I'm I've um, came to the realization that we probably have to lose a pawn. So I'm going to revisit King D four. Although that could even become a problem after even King F three could could be problematic because then King C four and we're losing it. Yeah, so that's yeah we can't do that. So that's Okay, I'm going to try um, uh, distant opposition with king d2. And then king d2, if he... King d2 is looking pretty good because no matter where he goes, then we can just get the opposition. So I'm actually going to go with king d2. King going for the draw. Well, yeah. the thing is, uh, you're actually losing the pound. There's no way yeah. around it. Mm. You can never keep the opposition because f5 is not available. So <laughs> you're going to lose the pawn eventually. Uh, the thing is, well, this is the critical position probably. And now it's white to play. Uh, we have established that the pawn is lost. The thing is, now your task, if you want to make a draw, is after you lose the pawn, you don't want the black king to get to one of the critical squares of his own pawn in d6. After he plays king takes d5, you have to prevent king e4, king d4, or king c4. And how do you do that? Oh, uh, king c3. King c3. 
if he wants to make progress, he has to take the pawn. Otherwise, we will repeat moves indefinitely. And yeah. now... King d3. King d3. Yeah. And, it, and now you took control of all the three critical squares, and he's never going to be able to outflank you. Yeah, king e3. Yeah. And once he uh, pushes the pawn, it's uh, the typical draw. Yeah. Uh, this problem has many solutions. Uh, you know that you're going to lose the pawn because there's no way you keep the opposition here with the pawn on d5. And as you said, he already outflanked you. I mean, and this king is into your position at this point. You're never going to get the trebuchet uh, with the king mm. on c6. You're just too far away. Uh, but uh, the king d3 is also a draw. The only thing you have to be careful about is not stepping on d3 uh, when uh, before he takes. Because then king takes d5 and he... And now every move uh, that keeps control of d3, king e3, king e2, king c2, king c3 are all a draw. Uh, you can just wait. All you have to avoid is this move because well, of King Tate. Yeah, but um, uh, if we can just go back a couple of moves. Uh, so, yeah. yeah, so so okay. if so King D two, whoops. Uh, ah King D two. Okay, yeah, I'm sorry, King D two. Um, <laughs> yeah. So so you're saying uh, you you were you were saying if King E uh, sorry, King you were saying if King E five, um yeah, but can't I just get the distant opposition here? Uh, yeah, you still could. I guess you. Uh, oh no, you're not an opposite. Now I here. get to one of the critics. And now it doesn't matter who who is the one to move. Uh, as we said, uh, black right. king on a critical square. Uh, and this is the, the reason why you might get the opposition, but. We are on the critical square, yeah. and now we have an extra tempo so that yeah. we can yeah. get the opposition again. And now we are going to get to another critical square. Uh, so, yeah, in, on this occasion, you can just right. uh, yeah. go for the yeah, opposition. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Oh, God, it's so embarrassing. But, okay. <laughs> That's what I'm shaking no, my no. head. No, but I mean, it's just <laughs> like, it's like day three of learning chess. I mean, <laughs> you know, like you forget this stuff. Uh, Okay. Um, well, uh, it's always good to refresh. Of course, of course. Knowledge. Yeah, that's why I asked. But it's just, it's funny because um, I'm playing all of these like really strategical games but with... Just, th just so that you don't feel bad about this, uh, this is taken from a game in an Olympiad. Uh, <laughs> it was a female Olympiad. Uh, I don't know the year, but it was... Uh, this was a game between Scotland and I don't know which other country. I remember that it was Scotland because the the first board of the Scotland team actually um, resigned here with White. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. She resigned. Of course, mm -hmm. the Wojtski wasn't uh, a fan of this. Uh, he, <laughs> he actually laughed at the poor girl. Uh, <laughs> in his books, he always mentions this example because of mm -hmm. that anecdote. Uh, so it would have been uh, funny uh, if they, uh, um, you know, they shake hands, but one thinks it's a draw, one thinks it's a resignation. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, so I guess yeah. So we can't yeah. we can't play King D two because um, Black will end up getting. Well, no, we can play King D two, but we can't go. We can't go all the way far. We can't go to the back rank afterwards because then Black will get his king yeah. to one of the key squares. Schematic thinking is important here. Uh, all you know, you, all you have to do with white is wait until he takes on d5 to play king d3. So any move that gets your king around the d3 square is good because all you, we have to do mm. is wait for him to take on d5 mm. and then we go king. Oh, yeah, right. Uh, as, as long as we don't step the, on d3 too early, we are fine. Mm -hmm. uh, and well, this is more challenging. This is uh, uh, this is complex. At this point, it gets complex. This is a city with so little material. I don't know if you're familiar with this one. It's, no, it, it's well known, but uh, but, uh, but my gut, my instinct is uh, is my instinct here is King G one. King G one. That's yeah. the first thing. Yeah. 
Uh, the reason we, I say that is it almost, I think I might have seen this in the Deveretsky endgame manual. Um, so I could be wrong, but I'm just going from memory on Chessable, I think, I, I think I've had this. Um, yeah, this one is uh, cited pretty much anywhere, everywhere okay. because uh, it's very thematic. After, actually, King G1 makes a draw. Uh, he gets to the pawn. He plays king d7, king h2, king e6, king h3, king f6, king h4, king g6, and he defends the pawn in time. He has fought Tempe to defend the pawn. Okay, so we're going for a win. Now with king g1. Yeah, you have to win this with white. Oh, so shoot. Um, I, uh, I, my eyes just glanced on the side of the board shows the... Uh... Oh, I'll turn it off. The book was open, so there was a uh, the um, oh the, what's, uh, <laughs> what's it what's it called the uh, table bases were there. Uh, so I, I, oh, I yeah I, unfortunately yeah. I caught a glimpse of that, but I turned off the book, so I don't see it anymore. You can actually okay, okay. you can turn okay. it off though if you go to the the study settings, uh, yeah. go to opening explorer or opening book and do like only me, like so only you can see it. Oh, I didn't know about that. Yeah, you can yeah, do it. Oh. Yeah, you can do it. Also, the engine. I did. Yeah, you can do the engine I, as well, the, so that only you can do it. Yeah. So I, you, I didn't know about that. Yeah, there's I lots of... I didn't know it had the table basis. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I could look like a genius. I don't know how <laughs> to... <laughs> I, I don't know how to turn it off, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but you, you know now, right? Yeah. Uh, well, not, I don't... See yeah, if you to... go to, you have to go to, um, you have to go to the study settings, not the chapter settings. Oh. So you have to find the little cog wheel that is for the... Um, oh, yeah, open it, blur, yeah. uh, you found everyone. It? Yeah, so you do just yeah. me, only me, and that then only you can see it. Oh, no, I see, yeah. okay. Sorry, so I can't okay. cheat. There you go. It's so gone that, now. Yeah. So okay. for that, oh no! What am I going so to do now? It doesn't annoy you. <laughs> yeah, but I, unfortunately, I saw that one. Uh, it was King F two. So <laughs> yeah. But I, oh, well, we have to explain why. Yeah, I only saw the <laughs> one move. It, yeah. Okay. Um. Well, uh, this works mainly because if you go for King G one, it turns out it's just too long away, and you have. The possibility One, two, three, with black four. of getting to the pawn on uh, because uh, the pawn on g two makes us makes it take an extra step. Yeah, the, I'm sorry. What uh, I was just saying, yeah, because the the pawn on g two. I was just wondering why it takes longer. If the pawn wasn't there, then it would. Uh... Well, so well. When... No, it would still be faster if you just go. For some reason. Oh, okay. Yeah. Hmm. You're going for the most direct route. Uh, F2, G3, H4, and you get to the pound. Now he's not in time. He can't play King D7, King G3, King E7, King H4. You capture the pound, and you even surpass the critical square, so you're winning that endgame easily. Uh, of course, if you get to one of these four uh, critical squares without uh, the H pound on the board, of course, you're winning. But if you supersede those squares, if you go uh, up from those squares, uh, you're winning even easier. <laughs> and so uh, he doesn't get to defend the pound now, so he has to push the pound forward, H4. And now what have we achieved? Uh, what's Black's plan here? Ah, he's going to force me to get a rook pawn, and then it's a draw. Yeah. 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 So if you go king f3 here, he can't allow you to take the pawn because you end up taking yeah. the pawn so h4, which is h3. a key square for your pawn. Yeah. h3 is yeah. very annoying. If you take, he gets his king to h8, and mm -hmm. it's a draw. And if you push the pawn, for example, if you go g4, the critical, the key squares of your pawn on g4 now are this. Yeah, it's, the king and is going to have to backtrack. To, yeah, you're not going to go get there in time, uh, white. 
he gets to g6 and it's a draw automatically. He plays king d7, king g3, king e6, king takes h3, king f6, king h4, and king g6, and you don't have access to the key squares of the pawn. Every time you move the pawn forward, the key squares also move forward. And that's the problem. Uh, once you get the pawn to g4, the key squares are just too far away, and you have to come and capture the pawn first. Uh, mm. You're not in time to do it. Uh, so king f3 is actually a draw. How do we reach the pawn in h4 now? I mean, it from my calculation, it seemed to work, but I might have missed something. But uh, now we go king g1. So king g1, king d7, uh, king f, uh, sorry, king h2, king e6, king h3, king f5, um, and king, uh, and then, yeah, and then king h, uh, king takes h4, and we, we're, we're, uh, we have one of those key squares. Yeah, exactly. King g1 then. And uh, what you did with king f2, uh, and so I'm going to go back because this is the... We forced the... his uh, pawn one one square closer. So we, we yeah, kind of... Yeah, you actually provoke him to a pawn so that you take it on a key square and the king, the black king, doesn't get there in time. Uh, I'm sorry, king f3 is a draw actually, king g1. And now, now you do choose the... Uh, the longest way, <laughs> you're going yeah. backwards. You're taking one more tempo to get there, but uh, he doesn't get to the H-bound in time. He still has H3 as a resource. And now what do you do? You got to uh, push the pawn. Because you, you can't yeah. allow, yeah, you can't allow him to, uh, to take. So, um, Well, because of what you just said, you don't want that pawn too far away because it's going gonna, it's gonna to be harder to control one of those key squares. So you just want it just... You still want to keep it close, so uh, uh, g3. Exactly. But I'm surprised you can still get there after. I'm surprised. Oh, because uh, you're going to hit h, uh, h5. It, yeah. Yeah, you're going for h5, yeah. and it's not going to get there in time. And now it's pretty much the same as the, as yeah. the first No, that's, position. that's very useful, Alessandro, uh, um, these key squares. Just visually looking at it, it just helps... Uh, it's a shortcut. It's a shortcut because you, you just look, you know that you can get, you know that you, you can look get at here. It and say, I, I get there. Yeah. And then you there. don't have to <laughs> worry about anything else. Because if you didn't know that, then you have to calculate the whole thing. <laughs> Another like yeah. eight moves or something. And even then you're not going to be sure because uh, the, the yeah. position maybe doesn't tell you anything. Yeah. Uh, and now it's the same. No, you don't have access to h5 but you take the opposition like this and you win very easily <laughs> uh yeah so that's the thing with key squares and this is useful for pretty much in any end game that it, that has been liquidated up to this situation where you can be a pawn up <laughs> that being said um, i think this position here um it's still uh, i still think it's a little tricky when you're in a bullet game and you have like one second left yeah uh, <laughs> it's not easy to know this. <laughs> yeah <laughs> Yeah, it just can be difficult even with so little material. It's kind of amazing. And the thing too is like, and yeah. that's I think that's why it's useful if you if you know the end games uh, very well because by the time you get into the end games, um, there's two there's two things. One, uh, you're often very tired because you just uh, I'm talking about like a tournament game. You're often very tired because you just spent like three or four hours or longer playing. Um, yeah. And then secondly, um, you often have like no time on the clock. So it's the end games, uh, it's easy to screw up in an end game, I think, over the board. Yeah, mo modern time controls actually are ripe for that because uh, you always get there in time trouble. I mean, in a game of 30 plus 30 seconds per move, uh, it's very possible that you get to an end game and you are going to be in. Uh, perpetual time trouble, as mm. I call it. Uh, I mean, yes, you still have the 30 second increment there, but if you are down to two minutes in the clock, for example, yeah, 
you're you're always sometimes and you got to write down your move and your opponent's move that's going to take you like 10 seconds uh so yeah yeah. it's not even really 30 seconds to 30 full seconds yeah and so and then then your your score sheet gets filled up so you have to go up and get another score sheet really quick (laughs) yeah i've Ah, I've done that and i I, I, i'll usually oh do you oh can you do that can you stop the clock to get yeah, another score? Can you do yeah, that? Yeah. Oh, I've always just ran. I just, I just, <laughs> I went really quick uh, trying to get another score sheet. No, no, you, you stop the clock oh. ask for an arbiter so that oh, you get but your score sheet. Yeah. That's your fancy uh, pants tournaments because you're at the, you know, the uh, titled level. But at my level, you, you lose, you lose some time. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, but um, and then uh, sometimes I will get my opponent. A score sheet too like i will go up and get a score sheet if he's been yeah. playing you know if he's been playing respectfully but sometimes if my opponent was kind of doing some annoying things during the game then i just get a score sheet for me <laughs> uh, yeah I let him I yeah mean. yeah you know if, if he was doing some distracting <laughs> things on purpose then or <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Normally, you you ask for the score sheet before that you're getting to, mm-hmm. and and the, the the game is prolonging, and you see that you're going to fill it up. Oh, that's good. <laughs> I, I didn't even think one. about. I didn't even think that you could do that, but it makes sense because it's their yeah. it's their responsibility to make sure that you have enough. Yeah, score sheet. Okay. Yeah, you can't lose some time because of that. It's, mm. it's not fair. Yeah. <laughs> Well, we're going to jump to another theme. Uh, well, this is a universal theme. It's the one of corresponding squares. You might have heard of that. Um, I, I've heard of it. It's a little confusing, though, to me. Yeah. Endgame theory is filled with corresponding squares. It, well, a King and Pounds and practically about corresponding squares. Uh, corresponding squares are two squares of mutual sucks. Uh, it can uh, correspond to the king position, to the pounds, uh, and the main case is opposition, for example. Uh, if you think about it, opposition is a case of corresponding squares. If he said, I want my king to be there to gain the opposite, that's, uh, mm. uh, yeah. that's the typical way of uh, Like it really doesn't want me to talk about the position. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> Let's see here. Okay. Um, okay, try now because uh, you, you don't see me anymore, right? There's no video feed on your end. <laughs> okay. So that, uh, do maybe you that... know, yeah. Yeah, do you know what the position is uh, between two games? Well, it's. Uh... So you want me to give the definition, basically? Um... Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I know what the opposition is, but to give a definition of it, um, basically, you're always going to be able to restrict the king from um, from moving past. So you could have like horizontal opposition, like what we have right now, um, assuming like no pawn, or you could even have like um, lateral or vertical opposition kings here. I, I also know about the, the distant opposition, like a king here and a, uh, well, I guess even a, a king here. Yeah, that's, um, that's the important thing. And that, even uh, here and here would be, or even here and here, I think it's distant opposition. Yeah, exactly. Uh, that that's the important thing about it. It has to be an uneven square. Yes. Uh, um, between. That's the important thing to know because the opposition can be close or it can be a distant opposition. And close opposition, of course, there's only one square between the two kings. Distant opposition, three squares as you marked here, and uh, even up to fight uh, with a king, for example, on e7 and the other uh, king on e1. Um, We're going to see cases of uh, distant opposition, which is much harder to handle. Uh, But, well, first of all, we get the opposition to do something. We don't get it just for the sake of it. 
you say that you win the opposition when you put the king uh, on that situation where it's separated from the other king by an uneven number of squares and it's your opponent's turn to play. Mm -hmm. That's when you win or get the opposition. And getting into the opposition, getting caught into the opposition is, uh, well, the other side of the coin. Uh, it's your opponent who takes the opposition and it's your turn to move and you have to give way. Um, you get the opposition to outflank your opponent. That means getting into his position. For example, this situation is quite clear in that, that respect. It's black to play, and white has the opposition. Uh, he has just uh, taken the opposition by the means of playing king b5. And it's black to play, and he has to let white outflank him because uh, when the c7 king, uh, the c7, and the king of b7 moves to c7, then you go to a6. And if he goes to a7, you go to c6. That's how flanking. You're getting into your opponent's position. Uh, the thing is, uh, outflanking has to think because if you don't get to, for example, uh, capture pawn or, or any, uh, the outflanking can be useless. And getting the opposition can also be useless uh, because the outflanking doesn't sample. And now it's black to play, and he has only one of staying in the game. Uh, yeah, this so, actually... Yeah, so first I'm just going to say that uh, your audio is um, stuttering, but what happens is something with a connection, it will, when you, it's like uh, it will take your words and it will say some of them really quickly, and then it will say the other ones slow, so it will we'll talk really quick like this oh, and right. then it will catch up like this <laughs> and yeah it's 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 being it's behaving weirdly but i i understood most of what you were saying um but it's kind of like when we first started uh streaming it was really uh awkward but yeah, yeah so my my instinct <laughs> or my 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 idea here is to play so wait we're black so so king c7 um and basically I'm thinking of giving him way, letting him take this. We're going to go up and uh, he can't push this because uh, we'll just take and um, yeah. And then I'm just, I'm planning to just go up here. And, uh, and I, I think that even if, yeah, yeah. So I'm trying to, I, I'm eventually going to go to King C5 yeah, if you get to C6, it's an odd one. Uh, he's never getting to the critical squares. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, yeah, you, yeah, I guess because... And then uh, I can yeah. just go um, up up and down and up and down. And uh, he won't be able to go here. He can only go this way. And I'll just keep mirroring him. Uh, like King, like uh, uh, King, King C6 and uh, King A6. And uh, and just go up and down. Yeah, exactly. King C7. Whoops. Uh, is is yeah. King C7 is the right. And yeah, you can keep the opposition. It's important that he doesn't get to B8 or B7 and complete his uh, outflank. So now you can keep him at mm. bay with uh, C7. And in this case, White won the opposition when he got to a seat and completed the, the outflanking mm. process, but it wasn't of any use for him. So mm. sometimes it's just not enough. Mm. Uh, in the initial position, King a7 actually loses. Yeah. We oh, lose now. Um, well, I was thinking that... Uh... The, the first thing that I was thinking of was, for some reason, I was just looking at a6. Um, a5, yeah. Oh, sorry, a5, a5, yeah. And then... Yeah, well, just king takes, and then the king should be able to get the opposition back. 
So king king takes a5, and if uh -huh. if if king b uh, seven, then uh, we take the opposition with king b5. Yeah, exactly. And king c7, king c5, and he has give way, and you outflank him. So yeah, in this case, you get the opposition, and you get to a critical square of the pawn. And king b7, king b5, king c7, king c5, and you are going to get uh, to do a, a successful outflanking. Now it actually is uh, mm. is useful. Uh, it's different when you play king c7 because he has a nape. He can't yeah. replicate yeah. Uh, his idea here. If you move this whole position uh, one uh, file to the left, it's a win for yes. white. Yes, yeah. Uh, because you have a big power and you can just go d5. And, and yeah, I mean, that was the very first thing that I was thinking of is like when I saw the position, I'm like, okay, he's got a rook pawn, so we, we want to let him have the rook pawn. Uh, yeah, and, try yeah, this one. Yes, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, so this is a case where opposition is hmm. useless. <laughs> um, well, this is a bit more complicated. This is why to play. Um, it looks as if we are in huge trouble now. Um, the outflanking process already began. <laughs> that king is actually threatening to to get to our pound, and that would be the end of it. Um, the first idea, of course, is always getting the opposition somehow and try to mirror what we got in the last um, exercise. But how can we do that? <clears throat> so, oddly enough, the first thing that I'm considering is King H1. King, um, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, King King H one, H one. That's the that's what I'm looking at right now because I'm thinking like, I'm thinking that Black can't move a pawn. He has to, he has to, basically take our pawn. So I'm thinking if we go King H one. And King E two, and we go back to King G two. Um, I'm wondering what black would do there if he goes king e3 and i'm thinking we just go oh but this is kind of what you're saying because it's not a rook pawn but still let me think so king e3 king g3 um i don't know it looks it looks fine to well no yeah it, it looks fine to me i don't know uh, yeah excellent it's distant opposition this time yeah three squares between the two kings and the important thing was avoiding uh, king f1 because you're not going to be able to keep the opposition because of the pawn on f3. Uh, at this point, you have the opposition, but after king d2, king yeah. f2, yeah. now you can play king f3. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, that becomes a problem. If king g3, king e3, and yeah, king Yeah, I've g2, seen this e2, type of this type of position in the uh, Devretsky's endgame manual, where you kind of want to keep this lateral opposition, but then your own pawn is in the way. <laughs> yeah, and now if you go up, then he gets the outflanking process completed, <laughs> and he always captures, and then yeah. one of the pawns are um, just promote. Uh, yeah, at this point, king d2, king f2, king d3, there's no way of, uh, of saving this. For example, if you play king g1, how do you play here as black? I think you can, I think you can, uh, okay, hang on.
Sorry, I'm really slow at calculating. Okay. Oh, no problem. Hmm. <laughs> not not as simple as I thought. Now it's time to be careful. Um, well, time to be careful as black because now black wins. Uh, but uh, you have to choose the right move. <laughs> So because of what you said, it, well, I'm kind of cheating here because I'm thinking of the previous previous exercise where it was basically the same idea, except it was everything was shifted over. And in that case, um, uh, the opposition didn't or this might have been two two ago. But uh, in that case, the gaining the opposition didn't matter. But now that there's not a rook pawn, I think if black can get the opposition, it will be enough. So um, I think, so, uh, so I'm looking at that now. Um, that can't be right though. So, I mean, <laughs> uh, so now uh, oh, I'm looking at King D four, either King D four or King C three. I'm just looking at gaining the distant opposition. Um, so let me just see here if King actually, yeah, let me do it with King C three because I'm a little bit worried about the, the, the mind, uh, well, I'm worried about the e4 score. So let me just take a look at king c3. And it's such a weird move, though. But king c3, let's say king g2. <laughs> I would have to go like, what, king c2. Um, but then... No, that's not going to work out because then king, where is he? Then king c4, is he there already? King c4 and king, well, no, then I don't know. That's... You're getting too far away. Yeah, yeah. The problem, so and then, I mean, okay. So then I was looking at king d4. So that's just say, but yeah, I mean, king d4, I think is going to serve us nothing because again, I think that, the pawn that's controlling e4 is the problem. So king d4, and then I think white could even possibly just go king f2, and we haven't gained anything there, I don't think, unless let me just, uh, unless we pushed e e4, take take. No, I don't. I don't think we're gaining any anything there. Hmm. Actually, you have a way of. Uh grabbing the opposition right away with king e3. This is diagonal opposition. And he has to defend the pawn right now, king g2. And now you win the opposition laterally, horizontal opposition. Um, he's tied down to that pawn. And you complete the outflanking. Now you get to the f3 pawn and you win. Uh, um, let us see here if, I'm sorry. If you go back to G, you still can't get the opposite. Well, uh, actually, black now gets the opposition. He completes the outflanking process here. Uh, you still have to be careful here. Kind of amazing after King G1. And I think this is the only way to do it. King D4 is a draw. Uh, you always want to keep the distant opposition. If you go King F2, at least he can repeat moves. He goes King D3 and he still wins. Uh, uh, but now I can make a draw with king a2 maybe because every time he steps on e3 you want to step on g3 and if he steps on 
D on I'm um, sorry, D3, where do you go now with the white king? I'm just debating between it's either H1 or H3. They both, I mean, they both get a type of opposition. Um, I think either one, I think either one would work. Uh, well, H3 is the only one that works because after King E3, you really need to play G3. These are the corresponding squares. E3 and G3 correspond to each other. Uh, E2 and G2 mm. correspond to each other and E1 and G1 correspond to each other. Okay, okay I, 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 yeah, uh, I, I see that. I'm just wondering, I'm just a little confused about the distant opposition here, because I, I thought like distant opposition, it would always, white would always like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like I thought you would, would always have the opposition there, like, but I, I can see that it's not, because we, so I'm just, Oh, I, I guess because, okay, because if we wanted to keep the opposition, we would actually have to go to G1, and that's we don't want to go there, right? Hello? Uh-oh. Oh. We got disconnected. Hang on. Oh, we got completely disconnected. Uh, let's hope after the restart, it works better. <laughs> yeah, on my end, it's... um. Okay, I got you moving again. There we go. Okay, sorry about that. Um, where was I? Oh, what, what, oh yeah. So I was. Uh, oh yeah. So I was saying, just well, sometimes I get confused with the distant opposition, but I I think the idea of the distant opposition that we can stay with distant opposition, we can stay in opposition, but it doesn't mean we're going to achieve our goal because if we do get distant opposition, we can we can keep the opposition, but we're going to lose the uh, the pawn if we do that, right? So if king h1 and king e3, um, if we wanted to keep the opposition, we have to go, we have to go to g1 or um, or i i9 i minus <laughs> one. We have to go off the board. Um, so yeah, so I I understand that now. So yeah, I guess if we want to keep yeah. the opposition while at the same time keeping one of the squares the key squares or corresponding squares we'd have to go to king h3 yeah. so um it very to... much depends on what the corresponding squares are and what is your goal because yeah king h1 theoretically wins the opposition for like a move because it's threatening the pawn and he's making you step into a square that you really didn't want yeah. to go to uh, now he gets the opposition just in one move. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> uh, I, I like that because um, it it makes you think twice about always caring about the opposition. Because okay, yeah, we're going to maintain the opposition, but okay, we we still have opposition. But so what, <laughs> you know? Yeah, so it, it doesn't yeah, always not, not quite. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't always matter. Yeah. Yeah, and now uh, yeah, the important thing is to keep in mind what the squares are so that you can calculate well if he goes there i get to go there and uh i always keep him uh away from the important squares that's why king h3 is the only move mm. that actually works here you want to get in touch with g3 g2 so that if he steps into e3 you go to g3 if he steps into e2 you go to g2 and the only move that achieves that is king h3 you keep in touch with both important squares. And now you have the distant opposition also, and he can't make progress because every time he steps into one of these squares, you keep him away. <laughs> um, for example, if he goes king d2, now he see that these are the corresponding squares. So you're going to play king h2, so you get in touch with g2 and g1. So if he steps on e2, you go to g2. If he steps on e1, you go to g1. And he, if he steps on e3, you go to g3. And amazingly, he can make progress. <laughs> uh, so distant opposition was the way here. Um, yeah, as you see, when you calculate, it's very useful to define what the corresponding squares are uh, so that you always have the possibility of uh, 
well, saying if he goes here, I have to be able to go there. If he goes there, I have to uh, be able to go to that other square so mm -hmm. that you can find the appropriate moves. Uh, it's sometimes it's easy to do. Sometimes it's very complex. Uh, I want us to see this next one. Uh, let me see. Yeah. Okay. This is interesting. Um, now it's why this is this kind of combines many uh, many of the things we treated up to this point. It's why to play and draw. And draw. Uh, yeah, you're two. You're, okay. you're pawn up in a in an end game with only three pounds, and you're fighting for a draw. Mm. By the way, I just want to say that your um, the audio is really good now. The connection is good. So that's so strange. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And all you all you did was uh, restart Discord. Yeah, hmm. yeah, that's uh, all I did. Actually. Okay, weird. <laughs> yeah. um, uh, okay, so white to white to draw. White to draw. That's weird. Part. Okay, let me think. These these can be hard here, man. So I'm actually thinking of sacking both pawns. <laughs> um, <laughs> but there's, there's so many ways to do this. Um, I don't know. Like, I, it's hard for me to know where to begin because it seems like almost anything would be okay it seems like it shouldn't be that hard to draw but um okay that's well, interesting about it you you look at it and yeah okay and then, is, so i guess the main way but... yeah so the main threat i'm seeing here is um if black plays king g4 that's the uh the big threat so I guess uh, we totally cannot sack the pawns. Well, hang on. No, I can, yeah, again, I don't really care if he takes both pawns, if I can, uh, if I can get the opposition, but uh, I probably need to get my king, I need to get my king up. Um, I think the first move has to be a king move um, because because uh, if if yeah if we push a pawn, he's, he's his king is going to be two squares in front of his pawn. I I don't think that's the way to go. So I think the first move has to be king move. Um, so that narrows it down a little bit. Um, and it can't be king h two, because black, I think can just play king h four. Or yeah, can just play King H four, I think. God, I hate these. These are so so <laughs> hard. Um Yeah, the third is you have to take into account that the critical squares for this pawn are this three square e5, five, uh, five g5. Five. And he's actually threatening to play king g4, take on f4, and take on g5, winning yeah. the game. Uh, Okay, hang on, hang on. <laughs> uh, 
Um, yeah. Okay, so I, I'll just so you know what I'm, I'm just what I'm looking at in my brain. Okay, so I'm looking at King G two, King G four, um, King F two, King takes F four, but he's going to be able to like shoulder me out of those squares if that happens. I'm not getting up in there. So I yeah, don't think that works. He gets a critical square. He yeah. gets a critical square of the pound. If you play G6, F takes G6, he's already on a critical square of the pound. Yeah. And if you don't, he's taking on G5 and he's also on a critical square of the pound. So uh, it's a big threat. And now I'm just looking at doing a combination of moving the king up and then pushing the pawns up, but I still think that's too slow. So, for example, king g2, um, and let's say king g4, then I was looking at uh, f4, but then, you know, just king takes f4, it's, uh, is king still going to be two squares in front? Uh, that doesn't seem to work. Um, hang on. Um, I wonder. Let me. If I what if I encourage his pawn to come a little closer to me, so that the the key square is a little bit closer to my king. So let let me think about that idea. So g six. If uh, if he takes if he does take with the pawn, um, then suddenly the key squares are on f four g four h four might be more manageable um if he takes with the king so if g6 king g6 um then maybe king g2 and that is looking not too bad uh king if king f5 maybe king f3 yeah and you defend the bounce on yeah. no problem yeah mm -hmm. so that's actually looking like not a bad option right now. F6. Um, so F6 and... What? Uh, uh, sorry? G6. I'm sorry, it's G6. And yeah, then... sorry, sorry, G, G6. G6. Yeah, and if, if FG, then G6. it's a little bit closer. Um, I'm definitely going to have... Well, hang on. Just looking at sacking the other pawn, but if so, so boom, boom, boom. Okay, sorry. So, so if I'm looking at G G six F G, and just just for fun, I'm looking at E five, and assuming that he uh, takes. Yeah. Assuming he takes, so G, F, um, then the, so I'm really, I'm really close to those key squares. So, uh, but his king is king. Should we have a good opposition there? Uh, the problem is our king can't really move. If we do that, if we sack two pawns in a row, I don't think the king can move because his king is always going to get opposition um, no matter where we go. We actually, yeah, so I, I can't give, I can't move the king because then his king will get, yeah, opposition on us. So, but I still like, I still like f6, I think. So maybe I have to move the king after. So f6, gf um, and then I think I need to move in the king, um, although it's a little hard. So let me just look at king g2. And uh, that's, okay, so well, king g2, king g4. And if I play f5, f5, if g, yeah. f, g um, if G F, I'm, then I go F King F three, 
and no the king is on on g4 uh, is it uh, yeah after uh, g6 f takes g king g2 uh king g4 and f5 g takes f5 okay uh, okay he has the pawn here and the king yeah. here yeah yeah um well yeah then i'm screwed so that doesn't work oh i thought i was getting i don't know f6 still seems like the way to go though um f6 g6, g6 sorry yeah. sorry g g6 uh, g6 fg yeah you're on the right track g6, yeah you f... have to yeah. bring the key squares of this little pawn f7 closer yeah. to your own king yeah. or otherwise you're screwed yeah. <laughs> so g6 it's okay f takes g yeah and now he's threatening to go king g4 and just take on f4 and if as you say you go king g2 king g4 uh well he's getting here and if you push f5 he goes he takes f5 and in that position he has the opposition and you're not going to be able to keep him away uh from these squares the critical squares of the five pound uh for much longer if you play king f2 king f4 and he gets to g3 or e3 so you're losing there <laughs> um well you I, I guess get to give him... i guess the interesting thing of g6 fg the interesting thing of f5 is okay well he didn't he may not have to take but he he can't move the king in so his only choices are to either take so um gf or else to play um uh, uh g g5 and i'm just wondering yeah. that, but g g5 the problem with that for him is suddenly he can't go to g6 anymore king g6 so if i play yeah, because my pawn is so. If he does do that, then I think maybe King G two. And yeah, uh, and you get your king here. Uh, and he has to. He can't. Are, he can't yeah. ignore my pawn. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You go King G two. He has to come for so, your pawn, and then it's easy to. So I don't think he can do that. So if I go G six F G, and then if I F5. push F five, uh, he can't push. So he has to take. So exactly. G F. Um, and then, so yeah, that's, and that stop seems... there and try to evaluate that. Now, yeah. what are the key squares of the pawn on F5? Uh, E3, F3, G3. Okay. If the black king gets there, you're screwed, basically. <laughs> so, uh, you have to keep the opposition and not let, uh, the Yeah, black but how, king... how would I do that? Because I, I can't move. Well, you have corresponding squares here. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> if you go to h2, where does he go? Oh, so I. <laughs> okay, so, so uh, okay, so corresponding squares can um, actually uh, um, take precedence over opposition. Opposition isn't the end all. I guess because yeah, so then we go king h2 and we go king g2. Uh, we just go back and forth and like, like king f2. We just uh, we walk back. Actually, and forth. no, no, no? Uh, you have to be very, very careful. Okay, here. let me let, let's go. Oh, okay, yeah, let's uh, yeah, and then f5. Let's show this because it, it's kind of complex. At, at this point, you achieve to bring the uh, key squares for the pawn closer to mm -hmm. your own king. That's good because uh, it's more manageable to get to one of those, to to keep the black king away from these three squares. If you get to one of them, that's the end of it. But now you have to see how you're going to do that. How do you keep this king away from those squares? And now you have to uh, prevent him from getting the opposition the close opposition at least too easily because there are some corresponding squares here. If you go king h2, he goes king h4 and he gets the opposition and he's always going to outflank you in the end. King f2, king f4, mm -hmm. and now he's going to get to g3 or e3. So you're completely lost here. <laughs> you can't. So this teaches us a lesson. If 
you go to h4, h2, he goes to h4. These are corresponding squares, mutual succession squares. Uh, on the other hand, if he's the one who plays king h4, you have to play king h2 and uses the opposition, which is kind of uh, final here because then he can uh, take it back from you. Um, the same happens with another pair uh, of squares here. Yeah. So, so if I'm just looking, then if if I if I go king g one, uh, his king can't go to anything on the fourth rank. Um, exactly. You get control of two corresponding squares, two important corresponding squares. So now you know that every time he steps on g four, you're going to play king g two, and you are the one who's winning the opposition here. He, it's his turn to move, and you know that in this endgame you want him to push the pawn, so it's easier for you to keep his king uh, away. And now he doesn't get to outflank you. And now it's a draw. He's going to have to push his pawn at some point. Uh, this is the difficult move to see, uh, king g1. Yeah, it's hard because um, it's really hard because in when my king when my king is on h1, um, I. In my mind, I, I, I'm just constantly thinking about how do I maintain, how do I get opposition? That's the all. That's what I'm thinking. And then I'm thinking like it's there's no there's no move to do that. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's a matter of yeah, yeah uh, of looking to take the opposition uh, when he steps on the corresponding square. Yeah, the, uh, some squares are more important than others here, and you have to know basically that if he steps on g4, you want to step on g2, and on h4, you go to h2, and there you get the opposition. And at this point, uh, at this point, it's him who has the opposition. He has a yeah. distant opp opposition, actually. Yeah. Uh, Corresponding squares are they're a little tricky for me. Um, I think I think I yeah. understand the opposition pretty well. Corresponding squares, yeah, uh, they. I don't have that down pat yet. Yeah, uh, the opposition is a means to an end. You want to outflank your opponent. You want to get him, uh, get to his position, get to an important square, grab a pawn, and conversely, when you are defending, you want to get to the opposition uh, just to keep uh, your opponent king away from uh, your important squares or pawn. Uh, and here, the only way is playing king g1. You don't get the opposition, but uh, you're actually preventing his king from coming to h4 or g4 because you have the corresponding squares under control. But if he keeps the distant opposition with king g5, what happens? Now he's taking a look at these two important squares. Well, I'm looking at King F1 because I can, um, I can move into one of those corresponding squares. The only thing I need to consider, I believe, is if he pushes F5, uh, F4. But so if King F1, F4, um, then, well, F4 is helpful for yeah, you. Yeah, I think now I can just these go. Are the critics. Yeah, I can just go to King uh, King F2. Yeah, he's never getting to to the critical squares of the pawn, and now it's the typical draw, a yeah, king and yeah. a pawn against a king. Uh, but yeah, th this is the difficult part. Now he do he doesn't get to keep the opposition. Uh, he can't do the outflanking maneuver. He can't play king f5. His king is <laughs> his pawn is in the way. And if he wants to step on one of these squares, then it's your turn to get the opposition. Uh, actually, this distant opposition that he has at this point is totally useless because he can't convert it into close opposition. Uh, and actually, the the aim uh, of the side that has the distant opposition is converting it to close opposition and then to outflank your opponent. You, it's difficult to outflank him effectively from the distance. Uh, sometimes it happens, but... Uh, 
here you really need to convert it into close opposition so that you can get to one of the key squares of the pound. And that's impossible because you uh, you can always uh, keep your king near these two important I, uh, squares. That's interesting. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's interesting that you say that. So the so actually distant opposition it's not exactly equal to uh, cl uh, close opposition as you call it. It's it's um, it's not as effective. It's not as powerful. It's maybe you can get close um, this uh, opposition, but not necessarily. Yeah, sometimes you you might lose the process and your opponent gets the opposition. Sometimes, well, uh, it happens with close opposition too. Sometimes it's useless because the outflanking maneuver mm. achieves nothing, as we saw in the first example, uh, where uh, actually your opponent was outflanking you. I think it was uh, the first example was this one. This is a close opposition situation, but after King C7, the outflanking maneuver is useless because he... Uh, he loses the opposition right away, actually. <laughs> and now it's Black who gets the opposition and he never lets, lets go. And, and yeah, it's uh, the opposition is the means to an end. If the outflanking is effective and your opponent gets to an important pawn or if he um, to an important square in your position, then it's useful. Otherwise, um, uh, it's not... An end in itself, we could say. Uh, distance of position is trickier because, well, for one thing, it's visually much more difficult to handle. And the process of transforming it into close opposition is a bit problematic. Um, it makes all the problems also. I'm sorry. Uh, this was the. Uh, this one is quite instructive. I mean, it's almost unbelievable that white is just fighting for a draw here, and it's quite an artistic draw <laughs> with G6. The, all the other moves lose. Uh, I think that's an important point to bear in mind. Uh, in this situation, you just don't get uh, your opponent to bring uh, the key squares closer to your own king, so he gets both your pawns, and uh, he gets his, his king to a key square, uh, by means of just taking your pawns. <laughs> For example, G sits, pawn takes, F5 is your last resort. But after he takes, he gets the opposition. And in this situation, it's important because he gets to uh, do an effective outflanking and he enters one of the key squares of the pawn. And so, yeah, G sits, F takes, F5, pawn takes. And now it's time to take a look at the corresponding squares because it's if he, once you step into one of the corresponding squares, that's it. He gets the opposition and you're busted. Uh, but now you can keep control of all the important squares and he doesn't get to convert the distant opposition into a close one because he has a pawn on the way. It's pretty amazing. And these endings are, are, not, uh, are not easy at all. I mean, uh, as you see, even with so little material is and makes uh, as the word he said when when you study end games you're not just studying end games i don't know if you if you read that quote <laughs> from him uh i think it's in this book um your for example king and pawn end games are great to train calculation uh because they are very concrete as you say you you have to take look at moves 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 it's all concrete variations uh, because they are, well, they are prone to be completely calculated up to the end because of the limited amount of material. Uh, so I encourage you to keep doing this kind of work. These problems are very, uh, are very useful. Um, so I, I hope it was useful. I mean, I, I hope that you... <laughs> um, yeah, no, I, I hope that you... <laughs> Yeah, and it's it, but it's it's also um, uh, what's the word? Uh, uh, when uh, it's humbling uh, when, when you when you're doing like uh, end games of any sort, but especially just like king and pawn, or if you just or even rook and pawn, if you go to the simplest end games. They can be so incredibly complex and tricky, even though there's like nothing on the chessboard. 
and it seems yeah. like it should be so simple, but it, it's actually extremely difficult. Um, the end games, uh, like even just king and pawn end games, if there's like multiple pawns and so forth, uh, they can be like far harder than you know, like the middle game. Even it's it's funny. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's I. It requires extreme precision. That's that's one problem. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, okay. So uh, maybe we we'll leave the next one for uh, the next lesson. Yeah. Uh, for the further lesson, the next one is uh, I want to see this one uh, once everything sinks in because mm. this seems so simple. I mean, only three pounds. Come on. But it's a really <laughs> complex, distant opposition end game that it's very hard to get. Uh, until you go through the variations. Uh, it's very fun to try and solve it, uh, though it's not easy. There are many things to take into account. For example, in terms of corresponding squares, uh, you know that if white gets to one of these squares, you're pretty much uh, done. <laughs> uh, so for example, an, a natural road uh, for the, an, a natural idea for the white king is to get to a five. Every time, uh, the white king gets to a5 uh, you are in big trouble you have you even if you are able to play king c7 then white plays king a6 and you don't get to keep the opposition with king c6 so that's a great problem uh, you have to be able to play when white plays king b4 you have to be able to play your king to b6 Otherwise, you're just not making it <laughs> uh, because uh, he gets to a square where he's going to, to just outflank you. Uh, so there are many corresponding squares here. Uh, there are many, um, many nuances with the opposition to take a look at. <laughs> and I, I, want, I want to let, uh, to let everything sink in before okay. we go into this. Yeah, yeah. It's get lost here. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, it's just funny though. It's uh, just funny how hard it can be, right? Like it's, <laughs> it yeah, was, just it's, with a couple of pounds, it it gets complex very soon. It's so uh, it's so you strange. You add a little more material, and it's <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, well, yeah. Thank you. That was helpful. Um, even even just the uh, the very simple visualization tip of uh, if you can, can like in the case of this uh, d five pawn, if you if your king can control one of these. Uh, squares were not controlled, but if you can 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 get to one of those squares, um, it's it's going to be a win. Um, it's very useful because it it's kind of a shortcut when when calculating and planning. Um, so that's very useful, even just by itself. I, I should before we go, I should add something because you something important there. Uh, I'm going to modify this example uh, just a bit uh, because there's another important rule there. Uh, um, it's very important with a pound on the fifth rank here. Um, now you have a pound on the fifth rank. If you get to take the pound on this seat, uh, you have to know that the critical squares for this pound are expanded. It's not only c7, d7, and d6, and e7, I'm sorry. It's also c seed, d seed, and e seed. Irrespective of who moves, if you get to those squares, you're winning here. And how do you win the opposition in this case? It's why to move. Uh, I'm looking at king g5. Exactly. This is a diagonal opposition. And you're going to convert it into uh, um, opposition, vertical opposition. And uh, well, with this, there's also some critical squares. This pawn on this. If you get two f seats, for example, with the white king, you know the black king is not going to be able to keep, keep the opposition because of the pawn on these seats. So if you get two f seats, you know that you win the pawn. Here, if you get two g seats with the white king, you also know that you win the this. Pound yeah. because he doesn't get to go to e6. So those uh, little visual rules are important. Uh, king f7, now king f5, and he has to let you yeah. get into g6, yeah. uh, which is critical square also. Uh, the same goes for the, the other side of the board. Uh, if you get 
to a six with the king, he can't play king c six, and that's an important detail to remember. Uh, king d seven, well, he has to part with the pawn. And if he, if you put this position just a rank down, I mean this d six pawn on d five and the d four pawn on d four, it's a draw as we saw uh, because you can always keep the opposition as black. But here the same technique doesn't work. Yeah, because he can get the opposition, but when the pawn that falls is on the sixth rank, now we know uh, with for your pawn on the d5 uh, square on the fifth rank, these are critical squares too, and it doesn't matter that you lose the opposition. Uh, the pawn endgame is lost by black. <laughs> okay, so um, if um, if if the king. If the key square, so if the pawn is on the fifth rank, then the key squares are only need to be one rank above instead of two, right? So, yeah, so exactly. even if if the white pawn was on f um, f f uh, six, then the the key squares would be uh, e seven, f seven, g seven, right? Yeah, if you get to yeah. one of those, then it's over. And even with the pawn on f5, you black pawn on f6, and you don't yeah. have to worry about uh, uh, losing the opposition. Because actually what happens is uh, white uh, black keeps it up to this point, but he loses uh, just in time for white to go to yeah. this Unless area. it's a rook pawn. Yeah, 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 the rook pounds have their own rules. Yeah. They're always uh, <laughs> annoying. Yeah, <laughs> depending on which side you are. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I had to make this clear. Yeah, no, that, that, that yeah, that, that's actually <laughs> good that you did. Um, yeah, that's it's a, it's a bonus. It's a bonus if you get uh, if you get your pawn <laughs> yeah. on the on the fifth rank, you kind of you get like a little yeah. cheat code lets you do it. You then it's a lot easier. <laughs> This um, really helps because if you get this position and it's what to play, you tell me this is what to play. Oh, I, mean, I don't even need to calculate it. Yes. Uh, until yeah. your position with Queen J5 and it's an automatic win. Yeah. And that's really useful. <laughs> that's really useful. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, okay. yeah, thanks again. I'm happy that we were able to do another lesson. Um, hopefully, we can do one again next week. Um, I'm going to keep plugging away at the stupid Blitz games. Uh, I also I told myself I told myself once I set a new personal best on Blitz, um, I'm not going to play Bullet or Blitz again until I hit uh, until I break like t at least 2100 on Classical or Rapid. Yeah, yeah. so <laughs> maybe or, or maybe 2105 or something. So because yeah. uh, I don't want to, I don't want to. Do, I mean, what was that during the so, during the social distancing? It's almost impossible not to play Blitz. It's just too tempting. Uh, <laughs> well, actually, I don't really like it. I'm just, I'm just, uh, I just want to set a new personal best because it's been a while since I've done so. But um, I, yeah, I, I mean, I did badly for a while, kind of got on tilt. I actually got down to like 18, <laughs> 18, like 80 or something. But um, since but then, I, I saw that you were going up then. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> since then, I'm kind of floating around 1950, which is okay. But uh, I want to get back to 2000 again. So, uh, um, I need to hit about 2034, 2035 to set a new personal best. Then I will go back to nice, some nice games. Um, and I might even, I, well, yeah. Uh, I noticed that Leech has changed their, um, if you go to the front page, they changed the, the time, the, the quick set time controls. I don't know if you noticed that. Uh, the, no, I didn't notice yeah, that. Yeah, so they, they removed the 15 plus 15. Um, which is what I, if I'm not sure if you're on that screen right now, but. Um, uh, they, no, no, I am. Oh, it's 15 plus 10. And that's rapid now. I see. Yeah. That's and then, rapid. Yeah. Not out classical. Yeah. And now yeah. classical uh, is 30 plus. Uh, they're really long now. <laughs> so. Oh, uh, well, 30 minutes. Yeah. I'm not sure if I will um play that long i might still try to play 15 plus 15. i'm a little sad that they removed the option because that was a pretty nice time control i think uh yeah for the but engine. you can can you do it personally yeah yeah i can i can do custom but it might take a bit longer yeah. to find That's games cast, it's custom um, yeah yeah it might take a bit longer but i yeah i haven't tried it yet I, i've just been playing blitz but um yeah, anyways yeah thanks again um 
and uh, I will see you next time. Okay. Okay. Bye. 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 Thank you.